let her go and hopefully people will show up. All right, well, hello everybody and welcome. Uh, I'm Alan Levine from Open Education Global and we're doing our first uh, of a series of, I hope, of what we call Demo Wednesdays Live or maybe it's live, I keep flipping it. But the whole idea is to actually uh, see directly uh, examples of, of either technology or OERs that have been developed or things that people are, are working on and, and really just to have it as a live demo and in a more conversational format. And uh, really glad to have Tyler Copeland here from uh, Blind Sign Networks, which are the people that produce a Big Blue Button, uh, which it is, of course, an open source platform. Uh, my main experience is using it for virtual meetings, but it definitely has a big footprint um, in the open course space because it's integrated into Moodle. And so obviously teachers are running classes through it. And uh, this all came about because um, I got contacted by uh, Fred Dixon from Blindside Networks who was um, talking, sharing a little demo of how they are incorporating H5P into this live streaming sort of experience that can be used um, both for whatever uses that you're using. So we wanted to have a demo of this and actually to see it in action. So really pleased to welcome uh, Tyler Copeland, uh, who's going to walk us through a little bit of information about, about Big Blue Button and then show us a demo. And then we'll just ask some questions. And, and again, this will be recorded for anybody who's missing this. But welcome to our first uh, live demo of uh, Big Blue Button plus H5P. I'm really eager to see it. Welcome, Tyler. Hello, Alan. Thanks for the introduction and uh, having me be part of your uh, Wednesday, Wednesday tech demos. It's uh, exciting times and happy to walk you through the Big Blue Button project and how we're innovating on incorporating other plugin tools within our core uh, offering. So I'll walk you through it. So just a bit of context building um, about Blindside Networks. Uh, we are the creators of the Big Blue Button project. We uh, first started the project back in 2007 within a university. So very fun times. It was a, um, Richard Alam was the, had a thesis project where he wanted to support the initiative of distance education. So that formulated an open source project and fast forward to today, uh, we have a thriving open source projects, like you said, integrated into the Google, Google core product and provide organizations, institutions with uh, edu educational institutions with a um, online teaching platform. So, so, since it, 2020, so can I can I just yeah. ask questions? Because we uh, so if I if I'm running Moodle or Canvas or Schoology, like I get Big Blue Button like baked in. Is that right? Or if the if the with, admin decides to make it available um, on uh, on Moodle, yes, yeah. Yes, and then other, uh, and then with Canvas as well, and then the other um, LMS systems, you would work with lots of networks to have integrations. We have a um, a heavily integrated platform, so we work with all LMS systems. Yep. Well, that's a big footprint with Moodle, and so absolutely, uh, we yeah. love supporting the other open source projects within this uh, within this world. And then in 2020, uh, we had uh, we calculated. Within Blindside Networks, this doesn't include the global open source project because it's hard to tap into everyone that's using it globally, but just Blindside Networks, we saw over 2 billion minutes of virtual classrooms since 2020. This is right. even past past the, you know, the inception date of, of the project. So uh, building the core of Canvas School Ology and Moodle. So yes, to your point as well, the administrator just needs to flip it on and then they have access to it. All right. So then what is Big Blue Button? Really, uh, it is a virtual classroom. Um, other organizations uh, outside of the context of an LMS might use it for kind of conversations like we're having here today. Uh, but the prime focus here of the product is to focus really on the virtual classroom. And our outcome of it is really we want to ensure that every student learns. So to kind of what is Big Blue Button as a whole, we're a virtual classroom that provides built-in tools. So again, this is where the connection of H5P comes into play. And we really want to engage students with active learning and then a lot of analytics. Because with the end goal, if this is to ensure every student learns, those are the key pieces that we believe are, are needed, right? We want analytics to understand are our students or are the users who are participating in the program or in the class, are they learning? Um, and then we can get that through the results through the various plugins that we have, again, alluding back to H5P. So again, right now, like a virtual classroom, if for those who have used it, it's not a boardroom. Really, the products are too different. So you see the video conferencing um, here. 
on the right hand side um, that can be, you know, like to just meet and have these conversations. But the vir virtual classroom, its needs, its goal is this really you need to learn as a student. So active learning is, is greater than passive learning. So just to kind of go back to you on like, what does that really mean? So there's a really amazing study out of Harvard where uh, they took a second year physics classroom into two groups, um, broken into two groups. And during week 11 and 12, uh, they asked the question at the beginning, when asked, sorry, they asked the question at the beginning, which of these two options, either lecture group or problem solving group would have a greater outcome on learning? So on at the beginning of the of the week, everyone scored A. They thought they thought that lecture groups would be the most engaging and most uh, rewarding and the, the the most impactful in terms of learning. However, after the two weeks, going through active learning exercises in the course, so like the second group, uh, the score was actually B. Problem solving groups. So instead of just sitting in a lecture for three hours absorbing information. The, the, the biggest impact that students had was actually if the content was broken up into smaller chunks. Uh, and then from there, they can go into small groups and then problem solve. So that active learning exercise. So again, context building into active learning. Um, so again, showing you all here, I have a demo of H5P, but this one here right now, you see it on your screen um, where actually I could probably, yeah, show us. Also, share screen. So you can see your side, but also I'm going to share my screen. They don't have pretty... a presentation, so I wouldn't yeah. have be able to do that. So I would have to just um, go back to here. That's okay. I'm pretty sure it's gummy no, bears. No. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back to here uh, to that slide. So, so here on my end, we have this concept in Big Blue Button called smart slides. So a, an often a, a challenge that we have with going from the physical classroom to the online classroom is the content. So in a physical classroom right now, the content is very um, organized in a way for lecture-based learning. And um, also, um, and to adapt to the online is all about that bite-sized chunk of information. And you know, you, you go through like, a couple of customers have called it pulsing. So you teach a little bit, you get an assessment, teach a little bit, give an assessment, teach a little bit, give an assessment. So in this case here with smart slides, we have the ability of presenting a question within our slides. So this could be pulled from existing slides that teacher have and have an engagement session with the students. So that active learning piece. So in this case here, um, we'll, we'll test in real time. So I have a button on my end as a teacher. So all I have to do is I don't have to go into polling and set it up. I click, I have one quick, uh, I have one button that is a quick poll. I click it, and then on your end, you'll have questions. Um, All right. So as a teacher, I can still engage in the conversation, ask questions, but all I had to do from a setup perspective is click one single button. Mm -hmm. And uh, I publish the polls. The polls are on the presentation and the chat as well. And then from there, yeah, <laughs> wonder who did that one, actually. What's, what's great though, and I'll share my screen with this one for now, is about that active learning, or sorry, the assessment part. So as a teacher or a moderator of Big Blue Button, you have the ability of going to the gear icon and going into our learning analytics dashboard. Hmm. And in here, we can go into our polling results and we can see who did gummy bears if it's the wrong <laughs> one. So we now have the ability of as you can imagine, right, over time through the classroom, we have several polls. Uh, we're, we're able to reflect back on these results of the teacher and say, okay, maybe Oliver, uh, in this case, he scored um, several of the results uh, wrong throughout the session. So, and, and this person might stand out to the teacher and say, okay, maybe I need a bit more time with Oliver mm -hmm. to support him as a student to really understand the content that he is, um, is, absorbed today during the classroom or more globally throughout a series of classes, a teacher can say back maybe to a previous class and say, oh, everyone didn't really grasp. Everyone got this one section wrong. Maybe as a teacher, now I can start the next session with, okay, well, maybe the, we can start this class off talking about this subject matter a little bit more so that the students can 
can fully grasp the information that was presented to them. And then one last final poll, and then they get that feedback and hopefully the results are a bit better than before. But this is how the, um, you know, as a teacher, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, can use assessments in a presentation and analytics. So again, building this up because with H5P, you get this wonderful feature as well, but this right now is in the context of, of um, Spark Slides in the context of results. So the next one here, again, one click can button. I, sorry, can yeah. I say, so this is already in Big Blue Button, the Smart Slides. And so it's it's kind of like one. you see people, they send people out to like Menti or something like that. And then they, mm -hmm. this is really built in. That's like. Yeah, so um, the concept of Smart Slides will continuously evolve. But our, our hope is that what we have it today as with polling is like very much the first version. The second ver the iteration of it as well will be able to incorporate H5P functionality, the interactive piece that we're really missing in a lot of online platforms, and then continue to build that out. Because really, as a teacher, as you're teaching, you want the presentation slides in a way to be your agenda for the classroom. You don't want to have to go to all the different pieces of, of the tool you're using to then spend that time. So it's like active, it's educational time loss. We want to make sure that the, that is a that that, that number during an online classroom is very, very low for the teacher so that they're there teaching and supporting the students during that live classroom. So yes, this feature here today in the context of polling is available. So we have this one here. There has to be some formatting. So you can see here with the question marks, it's A, B, C, D, E, mm -hmm. uh, one question mark, two of them is uh, this one as well. And then this next one, when you don't have anything, um, it's a type response. So I'm going to now click type response and you can you can try <laughs> to answer this. But now oh, students, right? You're, you're, you're thinking, you're taking some time and it's really these moments where you absorb information and um, you're able to uh, assess yourselves. I was going to say your first two examples are easy because I studied geology, but now I have to go back to <laughs> some algebra here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then you can publish polls and all of this stuff too, right? Is <laughs> what since it's in the recording, like right now when we share the recording, this will be available as well for the student for the the, the teacher uh, for later use. So here, smart slides. So Big Blue Button reads the text in each of the slides and gives the educator a single click to trigger the activity. So in this case here, um, you didn't see it on your end, but because of the question mark, you had this one click button. So an amazing way to speed up efficiency of teaching. And then on the viewer side, on the teacher side as well, you see these results come in in real time. And when you see everyone is completed, um, you can publish the polls back to everyone else. So if I if I just have a slide that has a question in it and then a series of answers, it makes it into a smart slide or do I create Exactly, it? yep. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that's what, exactly. So it's really the trying to increase that efficiency. We don't want teachers to have to go back into the presentations and, and structure everything in, in a new way. It's how can we empower their existing information and then um, support them through this journey. So yes, in some cases, we, an introduction of a question mark at the in the title would be required, but it's a bit of it's a let a little less um, daunting of an exercise than having to reteach someone how to build structured smart slides in in for Big Blue Button. And if I don't have a question mark, can I turn something into a smart slide? At this moment in time, no. But okay. um, you know, as we capture feedback from people, I think these are these are the insights that we'd love to, to hear and it helps shape the product. So not only is today um, kind of a fun tech demo, but we're capturing feedback a lot in, in real time here. And, and we, we love hearing from other folks. And these are the insights that we've filled back into the product and help shape it to what it is today. So. And so, sorry. And so uh, an instructor would import like slides in, in PowerPoint, or does it matter what format the slides are in? Like, what does it support? Right now, so you can upload PowerPoint, but everything gets converted into PDFs at the end of the day. So okay. in this case okay. here, we recommend folks to just export a PDF. It's just sure. an easier, it's uh, the less conversion time is needed. And um, in this case here as well. So I simply, for this conversation today, we uploaded a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. 
PowerPoint. Sorry, not a PowerPoint PDF presentation. Yeah. Sorry. And yeah. I don't like using PowerPoint, so I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> what uh, tool do you use? Uh, I actually, I have, um, I don't have any Microsoft products. So I have, you know, I have LibreOffice um, when I need yep. to examine things, but a lot of my stuff is like Google, you know, which can yeah. export to either format. Yeah, absolutely. And PDF as well, which is, which is the yeah. recommended approach. And um, so fast forward ahead. So you kind of got in real time as well, the learning analytics dashboard. Uh, so it gives you insights on where students are doing well or where students are doing some support. So back to that gummy bears example, um, as a teacher, we'd go back and be like, okay, well, Oliver likely answered wrong. So let's uh, support with him um, to, the, to, to, to just understand where he's at and what clarity we can provide here. So again, it's all about applying. So in Big Blue Button today, we provide um, multi-user whiteboard in terms. So right now, if I just turn it on, you see a new toolbar in your interface and you can draw on the screen. So that's a multi-user whiteboard, a fun way to do some visual assessment as well. We have smart slides, which we've shown. We have polling. So smart slides powers polling, uh, shared notes. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have some shared notes capabilities, reactions and breakout rooms. So when we think about active learning, these are the core elements that we find effective for teachers to engage with students. Um, I might just delete, I'm gonna turn it off. Uh, I'm just going to delete this, uh, the, the fun graphics for now, but great whiteboard functionality on top of the presentation. Okay. You always have you always have a sarcastic student in every class. So. Yeah, so Big Button, we do have a lot of um, settings for the user as well, just to support um, every possible scenario that can come to a teacher's way. So we can restrict chat conversation, audio, uh, reactions, etc. But back to the active learning piece here. So after apply, you have the efforts of students interactions that generate the analytics that you saw. Uh, there's that feedback assessment, and then that's effectively where the students learn. It's going through the cycle. So apply effort, capture feedback, and then um, the success of them learning that subject matter is now ingrained into the user. And and that all now to the ghost that feeds into Moodle or whatever your LMS is. Yeah. So to date, the analytics to date does not, but the hope okay. is as we build build a, a deeper relationships where we have a really great relationship with Moodle is the hope to be able to pass this information, more information back from Moodle into the Big Blue Button session. So as an example, um, a lot of feedback that we've heard is presentations from Moodle. Can we have them accessible in Big Blue Button? Um, or just information about the students as well. So things like um, you come into the classroom, right? And is there information around missing assignments or grades from a student that they can just see at a glance in the context of Big Blue Button so that they can support them on that journey? Um, so there's, there's, it's not there yet, but a lot of roadmap planning has been kind of discovered and talked about around maybe how can we have a better relationship between the two? Because it's very much Moodle and Big Blue Button together, that combination that provides a really effective online classroom. All right, let's see some H5P. <laughs> H5P. Okay, so there's two different examples here. Uh, we got world flags and then we got um, a crossword puzzle. So <laughs> what we're going to do is for this recording purposes, I'm going to share my screen here to show you what it looks like um, in, a, in a secondary session. So we have a dev environment set up right now with uh, this H5P demo in place. So I'm gonna ask folks here to join this link that I'm sharing in the chat. <laughs> Don't join the audio, just join. Just click the X and just join. And then I will share my screen. But I think we can have a fun collaborative effort here to, um, to show this in real time. Okay, but in, in actuality, this will be integrated right into the session that we're in. Yeah, so back to um, the way that this will work is um, in 3.0, Big Blue Button 3.0 that we'll be releasing soon, we have this concept of a plugin architecture. 
So it's empowering developers around the world to build on top of a core big loop button functionality. So this H5P example that you saw would be a plugin that would be required to be installed and set up within big loop button. So it's set on top of the core, but right. um, if your server is set up with big loop button and this particular plugin, you, this is now we're going into the technical side of things, but in, in reality, a teacher would not know this. This is just a set of okay. uh, technology yeah. side of things. Yeah. So, right. so now we're looking at so something it, that will be H5P, right? Exactly. So right now you have a interactive. So right now you have your presentation. So you saw the smart slide that you saw before. Yeah. I just came to here because the demo is set up on the server. So it would be part of your presentation. And then from here, the big one smart slides reads that this is a H5P player. Okay. So from here as a teacher, all the teacher would have to do is click play. Uh, and okay. then you, and then you all see an interactive piece on your end. And me as a teacher, I can see all of her and then not all of her. And I can see your answers in real time. So I can see not all of her. We got uh, doing pretty well, almost done. The real Oliver's, uh, you know, we're working through uh, the present, working through it right now, almost done as well. And then when you're done, you just have to click um, done on your end and we'll see the results in real time. And as a teacher, I'll be able to kind of see the final results. <laughs> All right. Guess and again, this, this aerial view is a really nice way as well, um, really mimicking that world in the real world, the real classroom where as a teacher, if you're, you're dedicating a task to students to work on, as a teacher is standing in front of the classroom, looking at everyone work and on the assignments, and you can walk around, you can see where maybe people are struggling or need some support. This aerial view allows you to build that visual assessment and support students as, as they may be. So there's future functionality down the road that we've, um, you know, we have, we're very much eye dating at the moment, but imagine if not Oliver was really struggling, could a teacher have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with, with Oliver sitting on top of HOIP to support them with that adventure? So now we got all the results are in. Uh, we got six out of six uh, completed, and now the teacher can go in and assess if these are correct. So this is one example of H5P. The secondary example would be this half would be this one right here. So I'm going to play it, and then on Ooh. your end, you all should saw, see a crossword puzzle. I saw code. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> On your end, do you see crossword puzzles? Yeah, yeah. So again, right now I can see um, all of them <laughs> going through and he is working on a crossword. <laughs> all right, this is more in Oliver's territory. Where's the geology? <laughs> So these are the two kind of uh, the demo examples that we have working right now. Um, folks that are very versed in HIP world, uh -huh. now that you've seen one or two examples, it opens up the opportunity of having these access, uh, visual assessments, interactive pieces in your, your session. One of the biggest things with online is that um, if you take your PowerPoint presentation and you convert it to PDF, you really lose a lot of the animation and the interactivity. So imagine with a PDF, you embed functionality of H5P, you get this interaction and assessment within your slides without having to go and share a screen, without having to go and have a, a third party application that folks have to sign up for. It's all embedded into the big blue button experience. And any H5P content type will flow through like this? Or is it a, a certain that set? So uh, the hope is all content type would be available. Um, again, because this is early, early demos of this functionality and this plugin yeah. in particular, we focus on these two. But the hope is to be able to tap into the, the entire ecosystem of H5P. So, and what what does it take? How do you get your H5P into a PDF for Big Blue Button to know what it is? Yeah, great question. So right now. Um, to be able to pass this code is required today, but over time, the functionality, um, and Fred's gonna probably jump back in and he can speak a little bit more on the technical side of things, sure. but uh, 
for today, we have to read this uh, this code snippet. That is, you if you're an HYP builder, this is an outcome. This is an output that comes from that. So yeah. once we get this core foundation of can we actually pass HYP functionality to the Igloo button, which we're in the, on the the, the the moment of this being complete, then we can optimize the the the, the, the how to get it into there. If you know what I mean? So um, core functionality is there, and then um, of course, as a teacher, having to put paste into this code is a, a, quite a learning curve. So the next step of this evolution of this functionality is kind of the limiting that gap of, of complexity and, and making it an easy user experience for, for those teachers. But this is what would be required today. But essentially, this is actually what the PDF needs to pass it off, but the user shouldn't yeah. see it, right? Okay. Exactly. So Smart Slides today reads this and then generates this button here for us to then easily click and engage with the or allow that the launching of of that h5p functionality ah uh, now i see why you need that preview right oliver <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah oliver, so you, do you have any questions <laughs> i know that uh seeing a lot of this for the first time, but I'd love to hear from, from your perspective a little bit on this, uh, on, on what you see here today. I've seen an earlier version and this one is way more smooth. So <laughs> good job. Oh, thank you. But I, I don't have any particular questions right now. I mean, no problem. So in, um, in theory, you would have an H5P sitting on your computer that you could select and say use this or um w would it grab it from a url or does it have to be like a you would save it locally is probably the most likely scenario right is this question towards oliver no way just okay. just thinking i mean i know it's in development um and so yeah. this is sort of like a first experience and so um, yep. But yeah, it's, it's exciting to see that you can interact with it. Um, um, in this case here, you would go to the H5P builder, build up with your functionality would be grab the code yeah. snippet from it and then embed it into your, your presentation slide. And it doesn't have to be a big code piece like this. If you saw in my other slide, which I'll yeah. navigate back to, um, whoops, that's sharing me, go in <laughs> here. <laughs> Stop sharing camera. Um, if you go back to this one. So in this one here, what we did is we uh, just took a screenshot, but the code is just white text on white background. So just okay. limited, limited to form a visual perspective. And yeah. this is allows us to have a an elegant slide for the for the teacher. But at this moment in time, the output of the builder would be required to live on the slides. But that's fine. I think this is the evolution of feature development and it's an exciting, it's an amazing time to have this functionality. And as we evolve this and incorporate feedback from the community and the optimizing the experience to support teachers, it just, that functionality gets easier and easier and easier, so. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can understand, you know, the idea that you wanna use ones that sort of, you know, score or get results from the user, but there's also value in giving your learners just a chance to practice and, and interact uh, perhaps with yeah. something that that doesn't provide, you know, um, an analytical score, um, you know, just the time spent or um, or, or just it's a, it's a, a discussion activity. So, you know, you, you work with a, a timeline or um, an image juxtaposition and then you have a discussion um, about what the students are experiencing. So um, that's. Uh, so absolutely like, and, and in that case there for example like as a teacher um you could easily have the classroom be broken up into into the different breakout rooms and once mm -hmm. in the different breakout rooms they can have those conversations the breakout rooms can have the h5p presentation slides sent to them so they could be working on it together as a group and then in that group as well we have the functionality of um bringing all the course material that you've worked on in those breakout rooms back to the main presentation area so then the students can individually or the groups can uh select an, an individual to present on behalf of that group and then talk about that in a more discussion format so depending on how you want to your structure and your your teaching style um 
it could be a few different approaches, but this one in particular um, is an often a practice that we see is having students be broken up in the in the break, smaller chunks in breakout breakout groups to, to have these uh, organic conversations. Right. And, and so probably unanswerable, like, you know, how far out is it that people will get to um, try this on their own? Like, what's what's your optimistic? So context? this in particular, right now, the plugin architecture first will be released in um, the 3.0, which is going to be coming out in the upcoming weeks. But the HIP plugin in particular would be one that had have its own roadmap that the hope is soon, but we don't have any hard date yet. We really want to be able to ensure that it's a really good user experience. It has the um, all the different pieces that we would want to have it as a first version. So, and and that means all of the big ones. Yeah, your, your developers actually have to work and, and make all the H five P talk to big blue function. Button. Yeah. Exactly, and making sure we're testing all the different scenarios that it works really, really well. That uh, that HIP object fits nicely into the screen, and I think for folks here today, like the biggest thing to do to follow the project really is either to follow us on our social networks or more specifically join the community groups. I think that's a great way for individuals to to just be part of our mailing lists, and you get. Um, updates from us, uh, we have weekly community calls, you can join those and. Those are the best ways to just really tune into the community and understand where we are with our roadmap and even provide feedback to us in those sessions. So it's always good. And where your feedback, your groups are off of your website, I would assume somewhere, but exactly. Um, yeah. Join the stuff that's available on our website and, uh, you know, a very engaging group, uh, in those mailing lists, uh, we have GitHub where a lot of developers are focused there in terms of providing feedback and contributing um but uh but yeah and follow us on the social networks the people yeah. love to share their thoughts on the different platforms just as you know you say github and the teachers will leave the room okay yeah so that's the thing <laughs> it's with, a scary you, place <laughs> it's true but when you're an open source project yeah. i think that's where uh we support oh, yeah. teachers we support yeah. administrators and then we support developers so yes, GitHub will um, very targeted to one one user group. But when we're talking about plugin architecture, H five P technology stuff, uh, the technical group can follow us there. Whereas the the website and our our mailing list is the teachers and the system administrators can follow follow our journey at that moment in time. Wow, well, it's it's really great to see this early. I mean, I know it's it's. I mean, just to think about to have live H five P that um, learners and, and your audience can participate with um, uh, certainly goes far beyond flipping through slides and talking over them and um, lots of potential there. And um, I don't know if you're gonna see this in other platforms. Yeah, it's exciting times. And I think it's great to have that, you know, even for the teacher to be able to pause and um, feel that interactivity of, of, a, of a classroom. Whereas in some lectures, you know, you're just talking to a screen potentially for an hour and a half to three hours, depending on this structure, but having the ability to pause and engage with with, uh, with the students is, is also um, fun for the teacher, right? So. All right, well, I really appreciate the, the demo, Tyler. Uh, and so. My pleasure. Hope we, uh... Hope we will uh, we'll share a recording and see if we can stir up some interest and uh, we'll try to keep tabs and I hope you and uh, Fred keep us posted and you know when it's something that people um, it's ready for them to try I'm sure there'll be a lot of people interested in this. Amazing well thanks for having us on on your first uh, Wednesday <laughs> demos and it's amazing to, to meet you and excited to continue having conversations. Uh, um, so thanks for being All part right. of the community. Hey, thanks a lot. Bye.